What's up, Trap? How you doing, brother? Good, King. Man, I appreciate you for having me. You hear me? Man. Hey, absolutely, man. Thank you, man. I, I appreciate you hopping on, man. And uh, wifey's not here. Queen's not here. She got pulled away with meetings and stuff like that. All good. It's all hey, good. The show must go, man. The queen handling her part of the business. You hear me? Yes, Listen, sir. <laughs> it's all love. Listen, it's all love, man. You you grateful. You blessed, man. You know what I'm saying? She can hold it down. You know what I'm saying? That's a major Absolutely. blessing. Absolutely, man. So, Trap, thank you, brother. Uh, I want to start off by just kind of um, letting you tell your story now. For those who have been living under a rock and don't know your story, I know you probably, I know you probably tired of telling it. But uh, if you could just give us a, a, you know, whatever version you want to give of how you became where you are today, uh, you know, take us back a little bit. Dig, dig, man. So first, again, man, uh, appreciate you reaching out, man. You know, I don't mind tapping in. We family, man. We all pushing it forward, right? We all have a purpose. We all have a purpose. We all got a piece of the puzzle that we got to play. Um, so for me, I'm just, um, you know, using my, pe being my piece of the puzzle. Um, so for people who don't know me, man, you know, I'm the Wall Street Trapper, um, from New Orleans, born and raised, man, just, um, without going too in depth and all that, so we can just get into it. Um, so I went to prison at 16 for a 10 murder on robbery. Um, just had been in the streets my whole life, man. Saw my moms get shot, saw my mom sell drugs. Um, just all that and I just really became a product of that um, most people will be like man that's crazy or whatever but I was just in survival mode um, went to prison when I was 16 for 10 years um, while I was in prison I actually had got into a fight with some guys and wound up going to solitary confinement met this dude met this white guy man um, it's crazy um, he must have been just perplexed about seeing you know it's a lot of black people in prison um so um a conversation we had in there was he showed me that we just playing the wrong game and so for me it kind of like like you think you think this is a game <laughs> like it's real life right here like this is not a game and so he really was he told me he was like that's the issue that's the problem like y'all don't even understand that it's a game and so my mind didn't even feel complex about him saying like y'all or nothing like that because I'm like registered what he's saying to me and so what really took me away in the situation was he simply told me he was like so you ain't here for attempt murder on robbery he was like and look at your peers you know what I'm saying they in for drugs guns you know just all kind of things and y'all y'all you know you didn't give away a large portion of your life for, for pennies you know what i'm saying whereas he was in there on a federal charge and i don't want to put his charge out there like that or nothing like that but he had hit for um i want to say 2.8 million dollars and he wound up paying restitution on 800,000, keeping 2 million and he only did 18 months and so for me that was a huge like wait a minute you know what I'm saying? And so he made me realize, he was like, this is what I'm talking about. And he was like, for me, I'll go home, probably do it again, come back if I, you know what I'm saying? If I come back and this time I can only do five years, which I'll only do three years and you'll still be doing this 10 year bid. You know what I'm saying? And I was just like, damn. So, you know, we just went to talking, you know, from a point what happens is when somebody put information like that in front of our face, what happens is we don't know how to respond a lot of times. So we respond to that with ignorance, like, man, uh, the white boy trying to, uh, uh. but he humbled me. You know what I'm saying? Like he humbled me like quick. And I was like, you know, and I would be real in my mind. I was like, I need to be doing what he's doing. You know, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like I'll do 18 months for 2 million. You tripping. Right. You know what I'm so, Absolutely. Um, what happened was, he started explaining to me just how wealthy people prosper in the world, man. How they learn how to, he gave me these three rules and I still say them all the time. He told me that one, I gotta stop trading time for money. Two, I gotta start um, letting my money work for me. And three, I gotta learn how to give value to people. And I was like, what do you mean by give value to people? And um, he said, um, he said that one of the things that wealthy people do in the world and how they attain their wealth is they provide so much value to the people around them and the people they work for and the people who work for them and the people they provide services for where the people would rather stay with them. 
he, he called yeah. it lifetime value before they went somewhere else. So that just stuck with me, man. And so he told me wealthy people invest in stocks, invest in real estate, and they start a business. So people always ask me, well, how do you get into stocks? Well, that was the first thing that came out of his mouth. If he would have said real estate, business, stocks, I would have went into real estate first. He would said, because you got to realize I'm from the hood, I'm from the trenches. Like, I've been there my whole life, so I'm looking for a way out. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't want to, you know, like, and this is one of the things, not to get off subject, but one of the things that hinder a lot of people and people don't understand how growing up in the street, growing up in the trenches really is. And, and I get mad at young dudes a lot because they, they get into them situations and they don't have to be there, right? So most people who in the hood, who really in it, who really, really there, they, they there, they searching for a way out. And one of the things I often tell people is, so people always present people in the streets with this one logic and it's go get a job, right? Like you don't have to do this, go get a job. And my comparison to that is always this, go tell someone who's been an entrepreneur their whole life or who's risked everything to be an entrepreneur, Go tell them stop being an entrepreneur to go get a job. They're going to look at you like you're crazy. So it may not make sense, but people in the streets, they are accustomed to just risking their life for their sense of what freedom is. You know what I'm saying? And it's not saying that right. it's right. Remember, we don't always got to justify what's right to everybody, right? We all going to do what we feel is necessary for us to survive. And that's the goal is for us to get out of survival mode and then just start being playing off and start being able to attack life the way we supposed to attack it because the system and the, the the dialogue that's that's pushed on us is to be in survival mode to be in defense so uh when he told me that man so i just spent the rest of my time just reading up on stocks looking at cnbc um a couple dudes i knew who was getting the usa today paper you know i used to get their paper and read it you know i was doing a few things in myself and so when I came home from prison, I'm not gonna lie, like I ain't get into it. Like I got back in the streets, but that's what I knew how to do. You know what I'm saying? Right. I knew how to get in the streets. And, but my mind was, you know, dudes in the streets always try to like come up with this plan. All right, cool. If I make a hundred thousand, you know, if I make 60,000, I'm gonna put 10,000 in the stock market. You know, you just come up with these scenarios. Um, and so I went through that phase, started introducing my homies to it in the streets, whatever, we still was hustling or whatever. Um, uh, caught another charge in 2010. My dough got kicked in again. Um, got uh, $10,000, eight pounds a week, a 40, a 223, just a whole bunch of stuff, man. Um, but I was fortunate, man. I was blessed. Um, I got found out guilty on that charge. And at that point, I just was like, all right, we, we got to change something. You know what I'm saying? Like, something got to change. We got to do something different. This ain't it. You know what I'm saying? Right. But uh, still wasn't dedicated to it, so I started robbing dude boys. That was my thing next. I, I ain't gonna hustle no more. I'm gonna just start robbing dudes. You know what I'm saying? If you're in the streets, I'm gonna just rob you. This is what it is. So most people be like, well, that's some hater stuff. Well, one of the things that when you're in the streets, you learn something like if, so if you're not in the streets and you, um, if, it's, 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 it's funny to say it like this, but like, so I was always taught like if a man go to work or somebody go to work, like they not part of the game. So they not, they're exempt from these rules. But if you in the streets and you in the game, I don't care if you sell a nickel bag, you sell a game. You know what I'm saying? But that was just the way I was raised in the streets and those are the rules that I abided by. So it may fall on people different, but that was the way I was raised. You know what I'm saying? That was the streets taught me and I abided by it. Um, and then one day I just did something me and my homie did something that almost cost me my life. And this time I was, I was, I was like too, too close to death. You know what I'm saying? And I was like, all right, something got to change. Um, again, I got found out guilt and I decided to move to Atlanta. I moved to Atlanta, man. And this, this was how I got that breath of fresh air. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I was able to see black people really being successful, no matter how they was being successful. I was able to see them. Um, I was able to see like, yo, like these people living in these houses and riding these cars, like, and they comfortable with it. Well, you know, I right. mean, again, I'm from New Orleans and you know, it's hoods everywhere, but in my, where I'm from, you get a, a Camaro SS, they on your neck. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You like, where's the Camaro? You know what I'm right. saying? And I see dudes in Atlanta just riding around in Phantoms and I, it just opened my mind to like, yo, we can be successful. So then I just started trying to figure out the game and um, the stock market was like a way for me when I got into it, I was like, oh, this, it felt different to me. You know what I'm saying? It felt different being able to have ownership in certain things like, damn, I've been spending my money with Walmart for, for years. My family been, 
like I can own this. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yo, all yeah. my partners drink Hennessy. We all wear Gucci. We all wear Louis Vuitton. You mean I can own this? You know what I'm all saying? Right. So um once I got into how powerful ownership was to us, and then it started putting me into how strong just financial literacy was and just how we wasn't playing the game. So I took it upon myself to learn it and educate myself, kept educating myself, educating my peers. And that was the birth of Wall Street Travel, family. <laughs> that's crazy, Trap. And the, the thing that's very endearing about you is that you have that story, right? So I feel like even cats who like maybe aren't cut from that cloth, they still relate to you because it's, it's just real. You know, your delivery uh, is it, very real and it's very raw and authentic. So when you started, I, I understand that you kind of did it for, for cats who was on the corner and, and you wanted to show them, hey, here's a different way to use that same mentality, but channel it to something positive. And, and now your platform is just growing to, to everybody. You know what I'm saying? So how do you feel about the, the first of all, can you tell us a little bit about your course? And then what do you think about how it's growing? Uh, what's your thoughts on that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Without a doubt, man. So um, I'm in, I'm a firm believer that um, we all have a purpose in this world. You know what I'm saying? We all got a purpose and we all here for a reason, right? And, and and here's the crazy part what people don't get. Your purpose and your reason for being here has nothing to do with you. You know what I'm saying? It has nothing to do with you. Um, it, it has everything to do with how you affect someone else. Like your purpose, your story, everything that you we go through in this world, like it's for somebody else. It's not for us. So for me, um, what I love about this was I was able to tell my story and also convert my knowledge into a language that made the everyday person be like, oh, okay, I can do that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Whereas I'm not saying, you know, somebody coming from Harvard can't teach us, but immediately, and I want us to understand this, even if we don't know it, you know, subconsciously, you're going to be like, man, you don't I don't feel you, man. You got a suit in town, man. I ain't feeling you. You know what I'm saying? You just gonna yep. automatically feel like, bro, you don't even relate to me. Even if this man from the hood, you know what I'm saying? But right. you see him in that suit and tie immediately, you're gonna be like, bro, you don't even get it. Like, I'm gonna holler at you. You know what I'm saying? So for me, it was able to say, nah, bro, like, we can do this. Like, yo, we were Gucci. Like, one of the, I remember one of the things I told my partners when we made them like think about it was I remember we went to Saks one day. We was in the, we went to Saks one day. We was going out to a club, and we went into. So I used to love the wear Fendi all the time. Like that was my shit, mm -hmm. right. So we go in there, we buy the Fendi stuff. My partner bought a little bit of stuff. Whatever we buy, you know, all the designer thing. And I'm like, yo, y'all know we can own this, right? And they was like, what? Can't. I'm like, nah, yo, like I'm about to show you right now. So I get on the phone, I buy, I get, I pull up this ticket symbol for um Louis Vuitton, LVMUY, which is LVMH, um, in the thing. So my partner, like, what that is? I'm like, Louis Vuitton, I'm like, Louis, I'm like, you know, they own my wet Hennessy too, right? So you about to go to the club tonight, you gonna buy some hen, right? You might buy some more wet for the females, that's how you feeling. I got this Fendi on, you got the Louis Vuitton on, yo, we might as well own it. Now we gonna, now we flexing all the way different. Cause now you tell somebody I own flex. Fendi, they gonna be like, what? You don't own no right. Fendi, so now I can show you I got 200 shares of Fendi. You gonna look at me like, oh, you want something different. You know what I'm saying? I'm telling my partner, we all got these trap phones, right? We all trapping off the iPhone, we trapping off this, yo, we might as well own it. If we own it, at least now, when you wearing it, you at least wearing and branding something that you own. You know what I'm saying? So um, once my partners and stuff started seeing that, they was like, oh, this this different right here. And so right. this was before we even got into learning how to research and all that. It was just like, I just want to own what I was. Like we wear Dickies and Timberlands all day. We might well own VFC because they own Dickies and Timberlands. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so like right. that was my pain point to my people. Like, yo, yeah. like we can own the same stuff. Like, and now we transitioning from being consumers to owners. And that's where the power at. You know what I'm saying? The power is in ownership, not consumerism. Um, so once I learned that, like, it was like, cool. And so with me building this platform, um, it's only God's work, man. Cause one of my friends, um, shout out to her. I always shout out. She'd be like, you always do this. She had made a million dollars in 2018. And so she had a financial advisor and her, her financial advisor, she was like, man, 
all these stocks I'm investing in, they're not doing this. And then I'm like, man, let me see what you got. So I looked at what she had. I was like, that's trash. That's trash. That's trash. That's me. That's trash. Get rid of that. That's trash. They making money off you right here. I'm like, you should have this, 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 this. She was like, boy, how you know this? I'm like, man. She was like, boy, I ain't never know you know that. I'm like, man, what? So she was like, man, you should really start an Instagram page and like teach people this because you made it sound easy to me. I'm like, you think so? She was like, man, I'm telling you, you should do it. Started the Instagram page in 2018, man. And here we are, you know what I'm saying? Being right. authentic to myself, not trying to change, not trying to do this, not trying to do that. And I know the way that what I teach about investing is not sexy. So it's mm -hmm. kind of like, um, when you think about, and I have nothing against the people teaching the trading and the options and all that, but for me, it was like, if you don't know how to drive a Ford Focus, why the hell are you gonna try to drive a Ferrari? You gonna kill yourself, right. you know what I'm saying? So let's let's learn the basics and let's, let's dig deep into this because this can make you a lot of money. This can build your wealth, right? This can be generational wealth for your kids, your kids' kids. Like we gotta think generations, we gotta say, at some point when we look at wealthy families, what we gotta realize is that somebody made a conscious decision to say, yo, I'ma turn my last name into an asset. You know what I'm saying? Somebody made that decision. Somebody said, the way we going right now, this ain't it. You know what I'm right. saying? So somebody made a decision and then they passed on the money and the knowledge. So all I'm saying to us was simple. Listen, gain this knowledge. I ain't telling you don't gain this. I ain't telling you don't do real estate. I ain't telling you don't do trading. I'm telling you gain this because there are more billionaires in the world that are investing in stocks long term than anything else in the world. But because it's not sexy, we don't want it. See, it's easy for them to put a carrot in front of our face and make us chase the carrot. You know what I'm saying? Whereas yeah. they getting wealthy the ugly way, but it's so dope. You know what I'm saying? Think about this before you get in. So in 1999, Amazon stock was about $47. I mean, maybe like maybe, maybe $200, I'm sorry, like $200. So think about this, right now, Amazon stock is literally $3,100. This man had over $2 million invested in Amazon stock at $200. It's at $3,100 a share now. And you asking me why he worth $188 billion. You feel what I'm saying? This is why he owns two, he owns shares of his own business. It's the easiest way to grow your wealth. It's the easiest way to grow your wealth. So I ain't telling you don't start in business, but the easiest way to invest in one is already running. It's already making mm -hmm. billions of dollars. Why not put your money there and then do what you got to do on the other side? You know what I'm saying? Absolutely, man. It makes it makes total sense. And trap what I what we notice because we deal with people who hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Somebody yes, on here said billionaires aren't in the stock market. Let me correct you, my guy. Uh, family, exactly. let me tell you something right quick. First of all, if you look at the five richest people in the world, Jeff Bezos, Warren Buffett, um, but now or not, the guy who owns Louis Vuitton, Wet and Hennessy, um, I can't think of the other guy named, but he owns Oracle, um, the internet. They're the five richest, and um, Jeff Bezos, I mean, now, uh, Elon is up there too now. Or you could Elon talk about Mark Zuckerberg. They all have 60, 45 to 60 percent of their wealth in stocks. Let me say that again. 45 to 60 percent of their wealth is in stocks. Let me just say that out there because somebody say billionaires are in the stock market. Let me correct you, my family. Let me correct you right quick, family. Right quick. But let's go, King. Let's run it, man. And, and Trap, I've heard you even say when you're analyzing a good business, you want to see that that owner is invested in in those stocks so it's, it's crazy how we don't even think about that like that owner is invested in his in his own business man that's something that kind of goes over people's head man but you you, you it's, it's because it's because what happens is so one of the things i look for when i'm actually looking at a business is i, I like to see what a, the owner of the business like is the ceo like is he still there so i like businesses that are ran by people who founded them so we look at like i like amazon because i know jeff bezos that's his business that's he he committed to it it's his baby you know what i'm saying and people don't like facebook but i understand that's more Zuck, that's his baby you know what i'm saying so you're gonna be committed to your baby even um right. with elon musk with tesla like that's your baby you know what i'm saying so if you own it i want to see how how much you love it you know what I'm saying? So if you got a certain percentage in it, I know you love it. If you a CEO of a business and you're not the owner of the business, I mean, you're not the founder of it, then now I need to I need to dig deep because I need to see, is this just a business deal for you? Do you love the brand? You know what I'm saying? I want to know all of that before I get into a business because I don't want to be putting my hard-earned money in there and you ain't rocking with it. 
Nah, that's like being in a relationship. You don't know one giving out love. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, nah, we're not doing that. We're not doing right, that right. at all. You know what I'm saying? Right. Absolutely. So, Trap Man, I want to ask you um, what I've been noticing. I'm always tapping in on the on the on the uh, trapping Tuesdays. For sure, for and sure. Salute. I, I appreciate that. Absolutely, man. And what I'm seeing is um you, you're transitioning more to the mindset piece. People want to ask you, hey, trap, what what can I what should I get in? What did you think about this? And you like, hold on. I want to speak more to the mindset. So can you speak a little bit about that? Like what what gives us anxiety when it comes to the market, especially our people, what what in, in, in what you've seen. So because the, one of the most important things that has to happen is we have to transition to what it takes to be an investor. I'm going to be real. Like, if you think about it, we have been taught to look at money from a scarce point of view. Like, think about it. Right. So let's just think about this situation. Most of us. Right. Because I can't speak for everybody. But most of us, when we were young and we asked our people for something, the first thing it was like, well, we don't have no money for that. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to say everybody, but a lot of us, well, we ain't got no money for that. But these bills is due. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> like, so you hear that a lot. So innately, you're going to adapt to that and you're going to take that same mindset. It's simple. Even if as a kid, if every time I came to your house and your mama like, boy, you better take your shoes off coming in my house. If I do that long enough, every time I go in somebody's house, I'm going to take my shoes off. I'm like, why are you taking your shoes off, man? My mama told me to take every. So that's just that you're going to pick it up. So that's what happens. Um, what happens is... Um, we have been taught to play the game from behind the eight ball, right? So we are taught that we shouldn't have debt. You know, that ain't good. When that's all wealthy people do. They don't over leverage, <laughs> but they use debt. They like, I'm not putting my money in there. I'm not been putting my liquid. If I do put my liquid money in there, I'm going to use as little as possible. Just to right. show you I got some skin in the game. I'm leveraging everybody else's money. Even with the bank, when you take the bank, when you go, the bank don't use their money, the bank use your money. You put a thousand dollars in the bank, by law, when you sign the thing, they can literally take 90% of your money. So it's all about, so we don't have that mentality, right? So we gotta learn what it takes to be an investor, right? We gotta understand that, yo, money is just a tool. You know what I'm saying? We gotta learn that. Instead of saying, yo, I gotta work for every dollar I make, you, we gotta transition to, yo, I want my money to work twice as hard for me as I work for it. You know what I'm saying? Like, so if I got it, if you out there busting a 10 hour shift, then you want your money to be busting a 24 hour shift. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not the person to tell people they shouldn't be working a job, but everybody should be an investor. You know what I'm saying? Everyone should be an investor. So the mindset is important too, because we gotta be able to transition to saying, okay, if I do work a job, then now my job is my biggest investor. Right, so I'm gonna take the money from my job and use that money to, you know, build other streams of income. I call it a triangle offense. You know what I'm saying? So we need to be able to do that. So the mindset is important. You can't even be an investor if you don't have a mindset, right? If you invest in the first thing you say to yourself is, so I'm gonna give you an example. You see a stock, and the first thing you say, man, that stock, I can't afford that. That ain't the investor mindset. The investor mindset gonna say, okay, that's the stock price. Is this stock overvalued or undervalued? Does it have room? You know what I'm saying? Like certain things right. have to start clicking for you. For me, I'm so tapped in everywhere I go. I'm like, yo, I can own this. I buy a product from the store. I'm looking to see who own it. Like who this company is? Oh, I know who own this. I'm riding my car. So I'm like, oh, look at this stock. You know what I'm saying? My mind is triggered that way. So we yeah. have to get into that way of saying, not simply saying, oh, that's a nice pair of shoes. I want to buy that, but I want to own that. You know what I'm mm. saying? I want to go eat at this place. Like when I go with my family, my friends, I'll be like, yo, somebody own this restaurant? Like who owns stocks here? Because if nobody don't own stocks here, somebody need to take their phone out at least on one share of this thing before I go in and spend my money. You know what I'm saying? Right. So the the, right. the the investor's mindset, the mindset is the most important part. It's more important than the money. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's more important than the money. Absolutely. Trap, man, I, I really appreciate this conversation because uh, our listeners, you know, we, we really come at our listeners that are dealing with uh, personal debt. Right. And so it's hard when you when you really dabbling in that and budgeting and the intricacies of personal debt, it's hard to transition into that wealth phase. And that's where we're trying to get people. It's like, that's cool. You you know, you want to get that consumerism under control, but we, we want to. Let's move to capitalism. You know what I mean? Facts. So I really appreciate this conversation, man. Uh, Why, man? You know, the dialogue is needed. We need the dialogue. We need that um, within one another. We need to be able to teach one another. And we, we have to learn to be able to accept 
excuse me, family. So one of the things that hinders us a lot is the term financial literacy, right? Uh, somebody say, yo, you financially literate. Like, you go, what? I ain't stupid. Right. I ain't, uh, uh. you know what I'm saying? Like, we gotta, like, accept the fact, yo, we are financially literate to a point. The reason we gotta accept that is because we've all been fed the same narrative. You know what I'm saying? And the narrative that we've been fed doesn't um, help us. So one of the things I always say in one of these um, concepts that I've been pushing lately is that um, building wealth is a revolutionary act. You know what I'm saying? And the reason why building wealth is a revolutionary act is because we look at the word revolution. The word revolution simply means the forceful overthrow of an old system to put in place a new system that is more favorable to you. That's all revolution is, right? So you can put that term in any way you want. So let's think about it. If we, if building wealth is a revolutionary act, then now what we're doing is saying, I'm going to overthrow the old system. The system has taught me, my mama, my grandma, my great grandma, and all my, I'm going to overthrow that system and put in place a system that is more favorable for me. A system that tells me that equity is better than cash. A system that tells me that uh, I'm able to leverage credit a system that tells me that ownership is the key right this is the system i'm gonna put in place so if we look at that act then building wealth is a revolutionary act especially for us you know what i'm yeah. saying so we are wealth economic revolutionaries and that has to be a play and all of us play a role all of us play a right. role man that's great man uh trap so before i let you go you posted a video the other day man of you uh, uh, at either a future sp- location, future spot for yourself, or a new spot that you you got, man. And you could tell from the video how your life has changed, man. So can you tell the people just a little bit of how your life has changed just in in the past year, man? Oh uh, yeah. So I'm not gonna lie, man. Like, man, listen, I'm I'm man. So I'm I'm literally in a place where. So I've been blessed with a situation where I can wake up every day and say that uh, I'm walking in my purpose, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm in a situation where I can get up every day and say that I'm doing what I'm supposed to be here, what I'm I'm here for, you know what I'm saying? So, and a lot of people can't say that and there's nothing wrong with it, but it's a a blessing for me to be able to say that um, every day I wake up, I'm like, yo, this is my purpose. This why I'm here. You know what I'm saying? Like, and a lot of people will never get that, and I get it. It's all good. But for me, it's thinking about everything that I came from. You know what I'm saying? Like, from watching my mom get shot when I was nine, yo. You know what I'm saying? Her surviving that, to watching my mom go to prison, to me going to prison, overcoming all that crap in prison, coming home, getting back in the streets, almost losing my life so many times from the age of 13 to... 30, you know what I'm saying? Right. Can count, can, the lost count of how many times I have put my life on the line for something that was meaningless. You know what I'm saying? Not even cherishing my life, not even cherishing like what I'm here for, being almost kidnapped at 15 years old. Like it's so many situations that I was willing to throw my life out there for, you know, and that's another thing. And I'm not saying nothing about music and entertainment because it is what it is, but they taught me not to cherish my life. You know what I'm saying? Like they yeah. embed that in me that I'm willing to die for this hood, uh, or I'm willing to shoot another man behind this, or another man willing to risk his life behind taking something from me, or me willing to risk my life from taking something from another man. Like my life has been on the line so much. You know what I'm saying? To come to a situation, you gotta think about it. So think about this: my mother been shot, my mother went to jail. I've been shot, I've been to jail. That has to stop with me. You know what I'm saying? So for me to be in a situation where I have a four-year-old daughter, which was truly the changing point in my life, um, to now be able to say, man, I can live my life and not look over my shoulder. I can live my life and appreciate taking my daughter to the park. That's why, I'm, that's why I told like, yo, um, can we do something? I'm gonna get my daughter as soon as it's over. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> yes, I, be with, I go through withdrawals when I don't have, I, have, I don't have right. three, four days. I'm like, yo, I'm about to come get her. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's understanding that now my life is in a different place. I've been homeless before. I've slept in trap houses. Real talk. I've slept in abandoned cars. I've slept in abandoned houses. I've slept in a prison cell with no mattress for 190 days. You know what I'm saying? Like I've been through like what will break people. So for me to be able to say, man, I, I got a 
I just got a new spot with a with a view of the city with floor to ceiling windows, man. That means something to me. You know what I'm saying? That's a long way from where I come from. And then to say I just made 38. And then not only that, but to be able to know that God is continuously using me. Like to know like, yo, he ain't finished with me. You know what I'm saying? To right. know that I'm just right. scratching the surface. It's like that it get me excited. You know what I'm saying? It get me excited Absolutely. to know that even the energy that I project to people is instead of it being a and I ain't really you know like you know being that you know it's not like yo what's good family like what's good <laughs> king what's down bitch like you know just yeah. to be able to have that energy to people to enjoy my life at this point and it has nothing to do with money and I'm not saying that money isn't important what I'm saying it's, my life is I'm so blessed on so many different levels the money is just the icing on the cake that comes with it but it's the freedom, you know, owning my entire 24 hours. I talk about this all the time. Like, I own my 24 hours. This is another thing that very few people say. Like, I wake up in the morning be like, yo, this whole 24 hours, this for me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Nobody don't own this 24. Like, there ain't nothing to do with money. That's real freedom right there. You know what I'm saying? So for me, these steps that I'm taking and like, that feels good to me. Like I literally was just talking to an insurance agent. We was talking about insurance and trust. This ain't nothing I never thought about in my life. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, yeah, but here right yeah. now, like, yo, let me put a trust. I gotta I'm like telling her, like, yo, I gotta put this trust together, you know, for this and this and this. And you know, walking through that whole process, I'm like, yo, I never thought I'd be here. You know what I'm saying? So for me, it's understanding now that talk me having with this guy in two thousand and in two thousand. Here it is, 20 years later. Me and this man had a conversation in 2000. I'm in a hole, I'm 17 years old. I'm with all the bullshit. You know what I'm saying? I'm with it, you know what I'm saying? But here I am 20 years later and now that conversation makes way more sense to me now than it did then. Now I'm seeing what he's talking about, about yo, being able to travel and being able to invest your money. And like, I'm seeing it, I'm like, yo, I get it now. You know what right. I'm saying? So man, that just that alone make me, you know, just appreciate everybody and appreciate how my life has changed and how now I'm um I'm able to now affect other people and be let them be inspired by me and you know make them realize that they need to make some changes in their life. And it starts with just learning how to invest your money. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, man. Absolutely, man. Well, Trap, thank you, man, for being so gracious. Uh, hit me back quick, man. I had no, you know, I had no idea that you was gonna hit me back, man. So I appreciate, I appreciate you, brother. I really do, man. man thank you, and, man. Uh, absolutely. So, Trap, for our listeners, can you let let them know if they want to join uh, the Trap University, how they can do that, and uh, where they can reach out to you if they wanted to? Oh, for sure, man. Um, so, um, so for some people who don't know me, I am the Wall Street Trap. I think you can see it up there at the top. Um, so just tap in. So what I like to tell people a lot of times too is, don't even buy nothing from me. You know what I'm saying? Don't even buy nothing from me. If your first time being introduced to me, your first time hearing me, um, don't even buy nothing from me. Just check the page out. Check out the content. Check out the stories. Check out me on YouTube on Tuesdays. I do trap and Tuesdays. Um, on YouTube, it's live, it's free. We don't try to sell nothing. Like for me, it's not trying to get people to buy stuff from me. It's about, I put out so much free game and so much good information is because I understand that I am a wealth of knowledge. You know what I'm saying? And and I'm not stuck there. Like, and I'm gonna tell y'all something. The minute you stop learning is the minute you lose at this life game. You know what I'm saying? And I never, I'm a, I'm a vessel, I'm a learning machine. I never stop learning. Um, so just check the page out, man. So you can check me out again, Wall Street Trapping. Um, check the page out. Um, just check out some of the content. Um, I got the podcast. The link is in my bio. Check out the podcast. Check out the YouTube videos. And then after you've consumed some of that, if you want to check out some work, um, so currently I am doing the Wall Street Trapping course. It is 40% off. I do have the private group, Travel Anonymous, um, where me and the group actually did a book club meeting last night. Um, it's an environment, because what happens is a lot of times we will be the only person around us that's investing. So now yeah. what happens is it gets boring. You like, yo, I can't talk to you about this. I can't talk to this person about this. You sitting here like, I don't got nobody to share this information with. So I, right. start, I, I started Trappers Anonymous as a group. 
um, of building like-minded people where, you know, I bless them. I put a lot of pull into them a lot. I do a lot of live classes and now, um, we now at 2,400 people in the group and growing. Um, so if you're interested in joining that group, it's less than a dollar a day. We would love for y'all to come over there. It's love over there. So yeah, man, I appreciate that family. Absolutely, King. I appreciate you. Likewise. Uh, blessings to you and your family, man. I'm going to let you go. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank brother. you. Thank you, King. I appreciate you, family. Everybody be blessed, man. Salute, King. Yes, Tell the Queen next time. She got to be on here. You hear yes, me? Yes, sir. <laughs> For sure. Family, uh-huh. 100. All right, Trap. Perfect. Yo, so we hope you guys enjoyed that podcast episode. We hope that we said something that you can take away and apply. We are here to inform and to inspire. So do us a huge favor and don't forget to rate this podcast five stars on whatever platform you're streaming us. And if you want to become a supporter of the Black Merit and Death Free podcast, you can do so by clicking on the link below. That's it for now. Till next time, I'll let you guys later.